Hi teachers, I'm Megan Vestal from Vestal's 21st Century Classroom, and today I'm going to teach you how to create your own teaching resources. I'm going to show you how to create those resources in PowerPoint, and then the additional steps you need to take to either convert them to a PDF or a Google Drive resource. Now, you may be wondering, why do I need to be able to create my own teaching resources? And I think as teachers, we've probably all been in the situation where we have a specific skill or a specific standard that we need to teach, but we cannot find the perfect resource to teach that skill or standard. I know I've been in that situation so many times, but let me tell you, once I learned how to create my own teaching resources, I never ran into that problem again because I could always create the perfect resources on my own. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you need to know is that you should always create your teaching resources in PowerPoint because PowerPoint is just so much easier to work with and to format things. If you've ever tried to create a teaching resource in Word, you know it's a huge pain. The text will not go exactly where you want it to go, and if you try to start adding in pictures or clip art, things just get really wonky really fast. So PowerPoint is your friend. And you also may be wondering, if I'm going to convert this into a Google Drive resource, why don't I just make it in Google Drive? And there's a couple of reasons for that. The biggest reason for me is I like to create teaching resources that are very appealing and very engaging for my students. So I like to use unique fonts and borders and clip art. And that stuff is very hard to insert in a Google Drive resource, especially the fonts. The other reason is if I create in PowerPoint first, I can lock down my instructions, the questions, borders, pictures. I can lock those things down so that when my students go to complete the activity in Google Drive, they can't manipulate and move those things. So let me go ahead and show you what you need to do to create your resources. The first thing you need to do is you need to make sure the slides in PowerPoint are formatted correctly so that if you choose to print, it will print normally. So to do that, just go to the Design tab at the top of the page, then go to the upper right-hand corner, and I'm very sorry, I know my face is covering this, but the program I use automatically puts my face in the upper right-hand corner, but there is an icon underneath my face that says Slide Size. I'm gonna click on that, and then click Custom Slide Size, and you will see this box appear. You can choose whether you want your resource in Portrait or Landscape. I want Portrait. And then you're gonna change the dimensions to eight and a half by 11. And I always click Ensure Fit. So now my resource or my slides are ready. If I try to print one, it will print properly. So I am just going to create a very basic essay worksheet about the Constitution. And the first thing I wanna do is I want to add a border to this and I can do that with the Shapes tool. So go to the Insert tab at the top of the page and then click Shapes, and I'm gonna use the rectangle, and I'm going to create a rectangle that covers the whole page. Now, the first thing you probably notice is we don't want all this here in the center if it's just a border, because this is where we're gonna put our instructions, this is where our students are going to type their responses, so we need this gone. And to do that, just go to Shape Fill at the top of the page, and then you're gonna click no fill. So the whole center section is gone and you just have a border. Now the problem is the border is very thin. I want it to be black and I want it to be really thick. So I'm gonna double click it and I'm gonna to go to shape outline at the top of the page. I'm gonna change the color to black and then I'm gonna click shape outline again and hover over weight and I can make it as thick or as thin as I want. So there's my border. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna add some text with some instructions for what the students are to do. So I'm gonna click the Insert tab again, and I'm gonna click on Text Box, and I'm going to draw the box where I'm going to insert my text. Now, as I mentioned before, I like to use text that's a little bit more appealing to the students, so I can do that by clicking Font and selecting any font that I want. Um, I've actually purchased a lot of these fonts that I use on my resources, so I'm gonna use this one here. And first, I'm going to create a space where students can write their name. And then I'm going to click down and center. I'm going to type the title of the worksheet, which is going to be the Bill of Rights. And then I'm going to type the instructions. So select an amendment from the 
bill of rights, summarize the amendment and explain why the founding fathers included it. Okay, so that's all the text I want. Remember, you can bold or italicize, change colors on anything you want by working in this little font section up here at the top. Now, the only other thing that I wanna do to this is I wanna add a picture or some clip art just to make it look a little nicer and a little more appealing to the student. So to do that, I'm gonna click the Insert tab again, and this time I'm gonna select Pictures. And then I'm just going to find the image that I want that's saved on my computer. This is some Constitution clip art that I have, so I'm gonna pick this one, and I can resize it and move it wherever I want it to go. And notice how easy that was for me to do. If I tried to resize and move a picture around in Word, that would have been a real challenge, but it was so easy here. So that's why you work in PowerPoint. All right, so my worksheet is ready to go. So let me show you how you save it. Now, if you wanna save it as a PDF, you're just gonna to go to File, click Save As, and select where you wanna save it on your computer. And then where it says Save As Type, instead of saving it as a PowerPoint presentation, you're gonna save it as a PDF. Now, once you save that, that worksheet is gonna be ready to print and ready for your students to use straight away. What I wanna do is I wanna save this so that I can move it over to Google Drive. So to do that, I actually have to save it as a JPEG. So I'm gonna go down to JPEG File Interchange Format, and I'm gonna save it this way. I only have one slide on this resource, but I always click all slides and okay. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to open up a new PowerPoint presentation that I can attach that JPEG to. So let's go ahead and open up a new one, click File, New, and Blank Presentation. All right, once I'm in my new PowerPoint presentation, I need to reformat this slide so that I can attach the JPEG to it. The JPEG, remember, is in portrait mode and it's eight and a half by 11. So if I try to attach it to this, it's not going to look very good. So let me get rid of these. And then I'm gonna click the Design tab. Once again, under my face, there is an icon that says Slide Size. Click on that. Custom Slide Size, click on Portrait. Eight and a half by 11. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach that JPEG to this slide. So to do that, we're gonna click the Design tab again, and then you're gonna go all the way to the right side of the bar at the top, and the very last icon says Format Background. You're gonna click on that, and this is gonna come up. You're gonna click on Picture or Texture Fill, File, and then you're going to select the JPEG that you just saved. Okay, so what I want you to notice right now is when I click on anything here, the clip art, the border, the text, I can't move it. So what I've done is I've basically just glued that JPEG to the slide. The slide and the JPEG are one. And why this is important is because when I transfer, transfer it over to Google Drive, one, none of my stuff is going to reformat. And two, when a student accesses the resource, they are not gonna be able to move anything that's there. So let's go ahead and save this, and then we will transfer it to Google Drive. So click File, Save As, and select where you wanna save it. And you're just going to save this as the PowerPoint, which is what's gonna come up. I'm gonna name it Bill of Rights. Okay, so I've saved this. So now let's go ahead and open up Google Drive. And we're going to open that PowerPoint presentation in Google Drive. So to do that, just click New, File, Upload, and select the presentation that we just created. Now you'll notice that it appears as a PowerPoint and we want it to appear in Google Slides. Very easy to do that. Right click over the image, hover over Open With, and select Google Slides. It will take a minute to open. The larger the resource is, the longer it will take to open. This one should be pretty quick since it's only one slide. I have some that are like more than 50 slides and those can take a while. But here it is, it is in Google Drive or Google Slides, and you'll notice the students cannot move anything that's here, it's all static. 
And the only other thing I would recommend that you add is I like to go ahead and add the text boxes where the students are going to put in their answers so that way they don't have to do it. So you just click on the text box icon, put your text box here. And the cool thing is when you click away, it looks like it's gone. But when the students log into this resource, all they have to do is click and they can begin typing their response. So it's very simple. So that is how you create PDF resources and Google Drive resources for your classroom. I hope that this is something that you can start implementing right away. And I wanna hear from you if it is. Uh, comment below the video with what teaching resources you plan to start creating for your, re for your classroom. I wanna know exactly what they are. I wanna know if you're gonna do it in PDF or if you're gonna do it as a digital resource, please tell me below the video. And I look forward to seeing you guys soon.